This video features original stories based on and inspired by the SCP Foundation. Some details and accounts of events, people, and places have been dramatized in an attempt to explain the sometimes unexplainable. This is SCP-049, The Plague Doctor. The esteemed Dr. Thomas Morstead entered the cell of the anomaly. He'd been warned and even chastised by his colleagues. But who in the Foundation could tell him what to do? He was the best at what he did. Maybe okay. the greatest in the whole history of the Foundation. So the best Foundation as guy checking the him room, out? SCP-049 bid him welcome, cordial as always. So polite in fact that you'd never guess you were talking to a killer. Okay, so this is a strange SCP that they've already captured. Very strange though that it can actually talk and communicate with people because the majority of SCPs don't. Most SCPs just kill any people, let's be honest. This one though seems to be at a different level of intellect. Dr. Morstead knew the truth of what he was dealing with, but he also believed he could get through to 049. Calm him, exercise the devil from him. It was the meeting of two great minds, one of them human, one of them part human, part something that has never been clear. Hmm. It was to be a battle of wits, and like so many great battles, this one would turn into a massacre. Before oh, we no. get to that fateful meeting, oh, there are no. some things you should know about the anomaly known as SCP-049. If you saw him in the street, the first thing you'd think of is playing, because 049 always looked the same. A man dressed in black robes with a plague doctor's mask. Plague doctors are so creepy looking. I mean, come on. He does seem pretty chill though. I mean, the, the doctor just walked in and started chatting with him. So far, I don't see like what the threat is yet. But this wasn't a costume that could be taken off. In huh? fact, it wasn't a costume at all. It what do you mean? was him. The robes had grown out of him like an exoskeleton. What? That horrible mask with the pointed nose wasn't covering his face. It was his face. Okay, see, this is somewhat relatable in my life because that's what I think about whenever I see Adam. Like, his nose, you think, is like wearing a mask. No, it is real, guys. It is real. A kind of shell that had seemingly sprouted from bone. The first reports came during World War II. In a picturesque town in the south of France called Montauban, people had begun going missing. Children disappeared from their beds in the middle of the night and weren't seen again. Adults okay, this guy's to touching kids in the middle of the night. I don't returned. like him anymore. Local authorities searched high and low. They scoured nearby woods and dragged the rivers, but nothing was found. Because what was happening wasn't criminal. There was no clue they could stumble upon or eyewitness who would break the case. No, this was something else. Something that the townsfolk could never understand. Word spread, and that's when a search and discovery team was sent from the Foundation. It was a cold, dark night in January of 1941 when the team found what they were looking for. They walked through the open door of a small house located not too far from the Grand Chateau de Richelieu to find a masked man sitting next to an open fire. And he wasn't alone. The floor around him looked like it was moving. Upon closer inspection, the team saw that the floor was covered with writhing, grasping bodies. It's patience, as it called them. Be what did he do to them? What did he do to them? I will say, plague doctors are doctors that are trying to cure plagues. I, I feel like that should have been pretty obvious, but in case you guys didn't know. Like when the yellow pox were a thing. There were a lot of plague doctors back then that would wear those masks and such and try to cure people. So... I can only assume that this SCP might be trying to cure people of something. Maybe all these people were sick and he's just being a good plague doctor and is trying to cure them. Who knows? Bienvenue chez moi, said the thing. Welcome, Welcome to, to my, my house. Home. Yep. Those so-called patients crawled towards the team, intent it seemed to okay. cause harm. The hostiles, now known as SCP-049-2s, were deemed dangerous and had to be eliminated. A sight, it seemed, that didn't bother 049. What did he do to them? It just sat there, occasionally looking up from writing notes in a leather-bound book as his patients were gunned down. Once the carnage ended, it simply closed its book, stood up, and allowed itself to be escorted away. So and that's the story of how 049 ended up at the facility, becoming a guest of sorts, staying in a standard secure humanoid containment cell, Research Sector 02, Site 19. The few that came into contact with 049 remarked that it was a pleasure for them, with its impeccable manners, vast knowledge of medicine and human anatomy, sharp tongue, and stinging wit. Okay, so that's pretty much confirms that he is 
actually really smart. He understands the human anatomy. He understands how to cure a lot of things. And he can speak English. So, so far, he seems pretty awesome. He seems pretty chill. Other than the fact that he made some people crawl on all fours, I'm not sure what was going on with that. They almost became spellbound listening to it, caught in the throes of its charms until, with the simple touch of its hand, it would drain the life from them. That's why SCP-049 was classified as a That doesn't sound good. That's why armed guards were always stationed outside its cell. So he it's drains the life from people if he touches them. when in its presence. And it's why Dr. Morstead should have known better. Remember, when 049 was discovered in France, it willingly went with the team, like it was happy it had been found, as if it had planned its own capture. When it arrived at the facility, it didn't act like it was contained against its will. It was like it was returning home. Initial hmm. findings as to the biology of 049 were that it didn't require any sustenance at all, not even water. It seemed content to be left alone with its notebooks. It did not object when it was asked if it could share some of its notes and gladly handed over its journals. But upon examination, it was discovered that they were written in the language that no linguist or cryptologist has so far been able to translate. It's apparent that 049 derives much satisfaction from seeing so-called experts struggle over its text. They should try asking ChatGPT. That thing knows the answers to everything. I bet if you put all of his notes into ChatGPT, it would come out in perfect English for you. They should try that. Unable to read those notes, a long line of doctors visited 049 in its cell, each fascinated by what they beheld. It was learned that it has traveled the globe. It speaks many languages, but prefers to speak what it calls les langues de l'amour. The French. language of love. It asks for only one thing, warm-blooded animals. The facility agreed to supply 049 with various kinds, including rabbits, cattle, and even an ape on one occasion. I thought it doesn't Just eat, Just like with humans, it could kill the animals with a mere touch of its hand, sucking the life right out of them. What? But that wasn't even the most incredible part. Soon those animals would rise again, as if reanimated by 049. Huh? They would become, for all intents and purposes, the living dead. So that's what happens when he touches humans as well, I guess, is they die and then they be they come back to life, but like they don't really have a brain. He kind of like zombifies them, I suppose. And they were hostile. After several unfortunate incidents, they were taken from the cell the moment they arose and disposed of in the incinerator. This was not to the liking of 049, who would uh -oh. claim it had I would not make this guy angry. For it, the world was sick. It saw plague and pestilence everywhere, and the meaning of its existence was to rid the world of disease. Humans, oh. it said, contained a virus and had to be cleansed. In the so it seems like he genuinely thinks that what he's doing is right. Like, by him, like, touching humans and pretty much shutting them off and turning them into people who crawl around, I don't really know what he does to their brain, but it seems like he genuinely thinks he's doing a good thing. Kind of like Thanos. Like, low-key, Thanos was a good dude that was brave enough to hold the burden of eliminating half of the entire universe. If you think about it that way, he's actually pretty, pretty, pretty chill dude. Pretty chill guy, that Thanos. In the first days after arriving at the facility, Facility. 049 didn't seem to pose a threat to humans. It was quite friendly, in fact. It seemed aware of the fear it caused in staff and would often go out of its way to make them feel comfortable and safe. Don't touch him, this bro. This was a ruse, of course, or a canard. Oh, as he's crossing his fingers. Would say. What? It had no intention to help humans. Hmm. No, it had come for humans. It wasn't trapped, it had set a trap. One of the first people to truly upset 049 was Dr. Raymond Hamm, a well-respected physician that had twice been a contender for the Nobel Prize for his more mainstream work. What had confused Dr. Hamm the most was not 049's clothes-like exoskeleton, or even his ability to reanimate the dead, but the bag that it used. 049 was somehow able to pull a seemingly endless supply of surgical tools from that bag. Sometimes it would even pull out objects that were somehow larger than the bag itself. It was as if the bag connected to somewhere else. And that's what Dr. Ham wanted to talk about on that fateful day. It's like the the bag Hermione has in Harry Potter, where it's like a small bag, but you can reach really deep in and just grab a bunch of stuff out of it. It's like that. With 049 on one side of the cell and Dr. Ham on the other. Maybe he's a wizard. He asked, how is it that you can produce a great quantity of tools from that bag? I've observed you, and it seems to me that you are doing the impossible. Dear doctor, replied 049, the scourge, the great dying, cannot be fought with a handful of toys. My bag is merely the product of my imagination. It gives me what I require. You what? Do, sir, it seems, are limited by your imagination. It stopped for a second or two and stared at Dr. Ham. I detect you are unwell, it said, 
in a voice not as amiable as before. It's just a cold, said the doctor. Ah, just a cold. If you had seen what I have seen, you would not utter such insulting words. Dr. Ham pulled out some papers from a briefcase and approached 049, holding them close enough so it could read them. You see, said Dr. Ham, pointing to the results on the paper, those animals you say you cured, they were not diseased. They were perfectly healthy before they died, and your so-called cure, it turned them into something quite terrible. We found that if they were left alone, they began to eat each other, and then themselves. 049 did not respond, and after a brief pause said only, a good day to you, doctor. Please close the door on your way out. This is weird. So, the plague doctor is claiming to cure animals and cure people, but really, he's turning them into monsters, at least according to us. So, I guess humans just have a completely different moral compass than this plague doctor does. You should get some rest. Ham refused to go, and instead turned oh the conversation into this not real attack him. The bag, demanding that 049 let him see inside of it. Very well, doctor, 049 said. Oh god, god, this is not gonna end well. 049 began to pull a series of long metal poles out this of its back. This is not going to end well, I can feel it. That it hung between them, creating oh a kind of medical tent around Dr. Ham. It seemed to stare for just a moment into the observation camera outside of itself. Oh yeah! Dr. Ham, Dr. Ham, Dr. Ham was discovered three hours later, crawling around the floor yep. of 049's cell. Now yep. another mindless undead. When he was retrieved by security, 049 didn't even look up from his notebook. Dr. Ham didn't get the incinerator treatment, but he did receive a fatal dose of drugs. A mercy. Oh, so they just, a removal they just team was sent to 049 cell, but it had said there was no need for special extraction techniques. <sighs> it would go willingly, wherever they wanted to go. It was not, it said, an enemy of the people. The Hippocratic Oath forbids me to- But how is he not an enemy of the people when he does that to people? Like, I don't understand where he's coming from. He needs to explain why he's doing that and how it's good for us. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense. Hurt a human being. It said while walking to the interrogation center. My only desire is to offer you my services and expertise. The floors and walls of the interrogation center room were painted a bright white. Even the table was white, which contrasted with 049, a mass of black sitting in the middle of the room. During the interrogation, it refused to admit or even accept that it had killed Dr. Ham. I cured him. I removed the pestilence from his body. So the only thing I can think of is that humans might be like too intelligent to where we're able to create things like bombs, like AI, like whatever. And those sort of things might destroy all of humanity. So maybe the play doctor is thinking like, I'm curing you guys by making you really dumb. Which does kind of make sense. There is the saying, ignorance is bliss, which essentially means being dumb will keep you happy. Because the more you know, the sadder you get, the more depressed you are. Generally, I think. That's a saying. That's what people say. I wouldn't know. I'm actually a very happy person. I did fail my math class, but that's not the point. I guess that is kind of the point, actually. It said. It was later asked if it regretted its actions, to which it replied, Well, good sir, one always regrets the loss of a colleague for any reason, but I stand by my actions. The pestilence must be abated before it is too late. Every two weeks from that point, 049 was given animals. The scientists yeah, at the why facility is he doing observed it, to it animals, time and though? again, touching the animals, killing them, before producing a saw or a scalpel and opening them up. Organs would be carefully removed oh. with perfect precision. It was astounding to even trained surgeons just how talented 049 was. So he's doing was. surgery on them too. I require a close relative of yours, said 049 one day to a young doctor, who expressed shock that it was asked for one of the doctor's family members. I mean a great ape said 049. Not your deal. Okay, that's kind of messed up. There were several instances of 049 displaying a crude sense of humor. Staff would almost forget that the thing that they were talking to wasn't human, almost. And it was Dr. Thomas Morstead that had supplied the great apes, orangutans in fact, that had been rescued from the rainforests of Borneo, only to be taken to 049 South. Okay, then one day, let's see what he does changed. with them. 049 told Dr. Morstead that its work was done, that it accomplished what it had wanted to do, and could someone remove the cured animal from its cell? I think you'd find that it's quite the work of art. A trial. What did he do? What did he do to the gorillas? When the removal team entered the cell, they found the orangutan, or what was left of it. It was lying in the corner of the cell. The top of its skull had been removed, leaving its brain exposed. Ew! On its face was the expression of relaxation, and from its mouth it issued very soft squeaks, like that of an infant. 049 said, 
Tell Dr. Morister that its rage mechanism no longer exists. I've removed the amygdala and made some changes to the hypothalamus and limbic system. It is cured and quite harmless. The next day, Dr. Morister- Okay! So, oh wait! I think I was kind of right, actually! It seems like the plague doctor is like, going into humans and animals' brains and destroying anything that allows it to think in a way that could be dangerous to any other creature. So he's pretty much turning all beings into harmless creatures. Except when he did it to the monkey, the monkey was still very, like, aggravated and would attack. So maybe that was a failed, maybe that was a failed experiment? I don't know. Ted announced that he wanted to visit 049's cell himself, after which he heard a chorus of disapproval from his colleagues, all telling him that 049 was now too dangerous. Dr. Ham was sick, replied Morstead, and 049 has assured us that he would never take another human life. He's never lied to us, and we're going to take him at his word. It appeared that 049 had created the perfect specimen. So what was next? Dr. Morstead had to know. Why would they Everyone trust him? Is How sick. could you ever trust him? 049 told Dr. Morstead after the two had talked for a couple of minutes. The great pandemic has started. Fear not, doctor. I have a cure. No longer will you humans spread your disease. I'm afraid you are wrong, replied the doctor. This pandemic you speak of does not exist. We can happily live with our pathogens. We have done so for millennia. Dr. Morstead became angry that he couldn't get through to 049. I'm afraid you are suffering from paranoia. It is you who need to be cured. You have no idea, said 049, standing up. What are you doing? shouted Morstead. You promised you wouldn't hurt a human again. I'm not hurting you. I'm healing you. Oh my god, here we go with this nonsense. Left across the room in a flash, placing Whoa. a hand on the doctor's head. Oh, GG's. Oh, the GG's. They were being watched in the observation GGs. room, and this had gone too far. He had to be moved to the containment cells, permanently. Mobile Task Force Epsilon 11 was right on the scene and burst through the door. Now imagination, 049 said to himself. Those humans have no imagination at all. He began walking towards the task force, who opened fire on the anomaly. You guys know that guns don't work on him. Black coat and Why would you still SCP try that? SCP-049 calmly touched each of the members oh my, of the wait. task force. No one way. One, draining the life from them. The last guys. one standing stopped firing and attempted to run. But again, 049 leapt across the room, black oh cape billowing gosh. out behind him, and gently touched the man, causing him to drop to the floor. Okay, going into this video, I knew that this SCP was going to be really smart. I didn't realize how powerful he was, though. Is this the strongest SCP that we've ever seen? Uh, bullets don't affect him. I, I don't think that they know of any way to do any damage to him. And literally, all he has to do, he has a touch of death. He just touched you, shoop, and you're slumped. What on earth is this thing? And how do you stop it? 049 stepped over the bodies of the fallen team and walked out of the containment cell. The full details of what happened next are available only to the O5 Council, what are sometimes called the Overseers. The redacted report that is available reads, Standard Secure Humanoid Containment Cell, Research Sector 02, Site 19, Subject, SCP-049, Date of Breach, Redacted, Euclid Class SCP-049 Breach Cell and subsequently gained access to adjoining rooms and nearby buildings. Breach lasted approximately three days and five hours. Total casualties? Redacted. With redacted number of survivors requiring incineration therapy. Course of Action. Department of Science Alchemy Division suggested injecting anti-transmogrify disinfectant into Class D former prisoners who were transported to site and allowed them to come into contact with SCP-049. Oh, SCP failed to reanimate injected prisoners and cure them. SCP-049 049 acknowledged this failure and surrendered to Mobile Task Force Alpha-1. SCP-049 then requested to be contained. Present containment under responsibility of Redacted, Redacted. Present location of SCP-049, Redacted. I don't understand why it's not Keter class when it literally admitted that it wants to like pretty much wipe out all of humanity, but who am I to say? If you guys enjoyed that SCP video and want to watch some more, make sure to leave a like on it and click right here for that other one.